Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, all praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakai Kodash. As always, double honors to our apostles and our elders at Great Millstone that taught us his truth and who are ruling well through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers who has it your lives to push the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Bible to help edify the elect of the nation of Israel. Shalom, peace and love to you believers, you Akim, you few Aquafium and children. Are we crazy? And that depends on who's asking. <laughs> yeah, according to this world, we're nuts. According to this world, we're crazy. You know, according to this world, we're insane and we're out of our, out of our mind. And that's because this world doesn't operate on the same vibration all right, and frequency as we do, which we're operating through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, in which this world is totally against Yahweh Shai. I mean, Yahweh Shai himself, <laughs> according to the wicked of this world, was looked at as an individual that was out of his mind. All right, so how much more so us are right, being his disciples, as it states within the book of John, the 15th chapter, and beginning at the 19th verse. If you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of this world, but I have chosen you out of this world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember that the words that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. All right. Yahweh Shah was basically saying that, look, you know, a slave isn't greater than his master. All right. Someone that is a servant isn't greater than his master. So if they persecute the master, what do you think they're going to do to the slave? All right. If they accepted the words of the uh, of if they didn't accept the words of the the master, why do you think that they would accept the words of the slave? All right, in which we're servants to Yahweh. So basically the same things that he went through and likewise we would go through. All right, and Yahweh was called crazy. All right, they said concerning Yahweh that look, this man is this man is crazy as hell. And he got demons on him. And he got a devil on him. And which wasn't true. But however, this world, all right, has a different view, all right, uh, uh, and is contrary, all right, from the spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Now, this is John 10 and 20. It says, and many of them said, he hath in devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Like, why do you listen to him? He crazy. All right, this, 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 this guy ain't got it all. You know, he doesn't have all of his senses. All right. Now, when you go into the word for mad, the word there is Strong's G 3105, Minamai. 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 And it says to be mad, to rave of one who so speaks that he seems not to be in his right mind. So if they felt this way concerning Yahweh Shai, that basically he was a maniac. All right. When you look up what a maniac is, a maniac is, is, is a person who exhibits, you know, sim symptoms of, of wild behavior. All right. Violent and dangerous. A person suffering from, from mania. Now, when you go, which obviously Yahweh Shai wasn't dangerous, you know, it wasn't violent. Especially, you know, coming that particular time. All right. But basically, they were trying to make it seem as if he was mentally deranged. And that he was he was uh, uh, full of delusion. Now, the reason of bringing all of this out is because this is what they're getting ready to do in this time. And this is wh what's going to justify them. And locking, you know, uh, brothers up for locking sisters up, you know, beginning with the prophets. 
All right, this is from an article from the Blacklisted News, and it says mental health roundups, the next phase of the of the government's war on thought crimes. And this is from July 19th, all right, 2023, the year that all of the uh, the year of all the hopeful prophecies coming to pass or the year that all of the hopeful prophecies come to pass in which, you know, they're saying a lot of things that we've already been saying, you know, but however, I read it anyway. It says there are no dangerous thoughts. Thinking itself is a dangerous activity, which just comes from Hannah Ar Arndt. It says, get ready for the next phase of the government war on thought crimes, mental health roundups, and involuntary detentions, which sounds like what? It sounds like FEMA camps. It sounds like martial law FEMA camps. Oh, you, don't, you didn't want to get the, the, the juice? Then guess what? They were ready to detain you. They had you on lockdowns. All right, now they're going to push the MOTB. And they're going to push their particular policies. And if you're going against these policies, you got to be crazy. Something is wrong with you. You don't want to accept the MOTB. You don't want to be a part of the NWO. Something is wrong with you. You are mentally ill. So they're going to take you and, 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 and try to lock you up. All right. And what's going to happen is, you know, uh, uh, brothers, you know, are going to have to flee the city. You know, they're going to have to, um, you know, go live in the wilderness and, and ultimately trust in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right, as was done in, in, in times past, the scriptures say that those things that were written for our learning, you know, those things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. You know, we read about, you know, the time of the Maccabees and how they were put under a great test. And at that time, it was dealing with swine, all right, and, and, and performing things that were sacrilegious. All right, but during this time, it's going to be the MOTB. And, it, and just as they were trying to make it seem as if our forefathers were insane back then for, for, for willing to go through all of the, the suffering that they were willing to go through, you know, to glorify Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. They're going to say the same concerning us. So under the guise of public health and safety, the government can use mental health care as a pretext for targeting and locking up dissidents, activists, and anyone unfortunate enough to be placed on the government watch list. If we don't nip this in the bud, which you won't be able to because it's going to happen anywhere, it's according to biblical prophecy, and soon this will become yet another pretext for which government officials can violate the First and Fourth Amendments at will. Fuck the fourth, First and Fourth Amendment. They don't give a damn about that. The Constitution been done away with. All right. The Constitution has been done away with. They don't care about the Constitution. They don't care about the, 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 the different amendments. The only thing that they care about is their policies and forwarding their agendas. That's it. And either you're going to comply or either you're going to have to meet their force. This is how it begins in communities across the nation police are em empowered to forcibly de detain individuals they believe might be mentally ill based solely on their own judgment, even if those uh, individuals pose no danger. So even if you don't pose any danger, if they decided that they want to lock you up against your will, they can do that. You know, shoot you up with something and throw you in the nut house. All right, but in this case, it's going to be FEMA camps. In New York City, for example, you can find yourself forcefully hospitalized for su uh, suspected mental illness if you carry our firm held beliefs not uh, congruent with cultural ideas. So if you don't want to accept most, you know, in the, in the alternative lifestyle, if you don't want to accept the MOTB and you believe that Yahweh Shah is your Lord and Savior, that will be considered a, a, a thought or a belief that is congruent. All right. So let's look up the definition of congruent. And for some reason, I've been uh, filling the online etymology lately. 
Now, the word congruent means suitable, proper, or harmoniously joined or related. So what does it have to be? Uh, uh, who does it have to be suitable to? All right, who determines that it's proper? proper? All right, who will it be harmoniously joined or related to? The, 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 the beast, all right, that newly comes up, which is the NWO. All right, the book of uh, uh, Revelation, the 13th chapter, okay, and the 11th verse, which reads, it says, and I beheld an another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So what does this beast represent? This beast represents, you know, America, all right, which is ruling over the nations. And in America, you have the Democrats and the Republicans, all right, in which they started off speaking as a lamb, but now they're speaking as a dragon, you know? So they're pushing what? They're pushing their NWO. You know, they have their, their Congress, you know, they have their Senate, you know, they're formulating their bills, which eventually could become laws, you know, their, their unlawful decrees, you know, their right and grievousness, uh, uh, which they have prescribed, you know, their uh, uh, form of framing mischief by law. You know, they, they put forth mischief so that they can bring forth certain laws. And when you don't want to agree with them and you don't bow down to it, then basically they look at you as a dissident. They, they uh, um, basically say that you are not harmoniously joined or related. All right. Or, or agreeing. You know, with whatever they're bringing to pass. And because you won't do that, guess what they're going to label you as? Oh, you got to be out of your mind. You crazy as hell, you know, to deny us and what we're pushing this agenda. All right, you're not in your right mind. But ultimately, the elect are in their right mind. And as it states within the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, and beginning at verse 4, it says, But what saith the answer of Yahweh unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, at this, this present time, there's a remnant according to the election of grace. So that remnant is going to continue to believe in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, despite all of the things that they're going to suffer, despite all of the things that Esau, Edom, is going to put forth. And what's going to happen is, guess what? They're going to be viewed as being crazy, all right, as being insane. So reading on, it says, exhibit a willingness to engage in meaningful discussion, have excessive fears of specific stimuli, or refuse voluntary treatment and recommendations, which are a particular treatment that th that's going to be voluntary is the MOTB. See, they're going to push the MOTB as the all- time solution for for every single problem all right and those that take it they will it will be considered receiving a voluntary treatment all right but however those that refuse it guess what they're going to view you as being mentally ill and crazy reading on it says while these programs are anticipably aimed at getting the homeless off the street when combined with uh, advances in mass surveillance, technology, artificial intelligence, power programs that can track people by their biometrics and behavior, mental health sensors, data tracked by wearables, uh, data and monitored by government agencies such as HARPA, uh, threat assessment, behaviors, uh, sense sensing warnings, pre-crime initiatives, and flag gun laws and mental health First aid programs aimed at training gatekeepers to identify who might pose a threat to public safety. They could well signal a tipping point in government's efforts to penalize those engaging in so-called thought crimes. All right. So they're going to say that we're besides ourselves. And um, like like Apostle Paul said, you know, he said, hey, look, if we be besides ourselves, then it's to glorify Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So if we seem crazy, you know, then it's to bring glory to the Heavenly Father and to His Son. You know, out there preaching on the street, uh, on the streets, preaching His truth. You know, all of the, the things that we say within this message, Yahweh Shai is coming back in the Great Fathership. That's crazy to people. 
All right, we're going to be changed. We're going to receive new uh, spiritual powers. People think that's crazy. All right, this world is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. People think that's crazy because in their mind, they can't see it. They don't have faith. So to them, any, any form of disruption of this world and this society and this rulership is considered crazy. It's considered crazy. It's considered madness. But we're not besides ourselves. We're sober-minded. We're in our right mind. And we can see what's going to happen to this place. And all we're doing is prophesying it. The book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 13. For whether we be besides ourselves, it's to, it is to Yahweh. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Now, when you go into the word for besides ourselves, the word there is... Uh, to put stand, I'm sorry, the word there is exist in me. And it says to throw out of question, to displace, to be amazed, to astonish, to throw into wonderment, to be amazed, astounded, to be put out of one's mind besides oneself insane. So what does the word insane means? A state of the mind which presents normal perception, behavior, or so, uh, social interaction seriously mentally ill so they're trying to make it seem as if we're mentally ill but yet we're not uh, uh out of our minds we're not insane but we're we're the only ones upon the planet earth that's in their right mind which the word sober is uh sophroneo and it says to be of a sound mind to be in one's right mind to exercise self-control, to put a moderate estimate upon oneself, think of oneself soberly, to curb one's passions. So who are the only ones that's in their right mind? We are. The same verse, but in the NLT, if it seems we are crazy, it is to bring glory to the Most High. If we are in our right minds, it is to, it is to your benefit. So we seem crazy to them when we go out to the highways and hedges, when we're uh, uh, dressed up in our in our garments, you know, with the fringes and border of blue, and we're prophesying events that are to come, people look at us on the same level that they will look at a, a, a homeless guy in, inside of a, a a movie, you know, that has the, the 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 sign, you know, that's that that has the doomsday message on it. All right, we are the prophets of doom. All right, the scripture says that the day of doom shall be the end of this world and immortality for to come wherein corruption is past. Second Ezra 7 and 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. And what is the time? That this age. Because this the, the end of this age is going to be filled with, you know, uh, um, the four sword judgments, you know, the beast to tear, you know, the plagues, the famine, you know, and the sword. But then also... The people that escape those particular judgments are going to get mangled by Yahweh Shai when he comes in the chariot and then also the thermonuclear destruction. So all of that is, is, is bound up within doom and our message consists of what? Lamentation, mourning and walls. Our, lamenta uh, our, like our message consists of, you know, prophesying doom. And when we prophesy these things, these people suffer from normalcy bias. They suffer from cognitive dissonance. All right, they they don't believe that these things are going to happen, and we're just lunatics. You know, we're just insane. All right, we're just crazy men out there on the streets, but none of them are taking heed that the messages that we're pushing are actually coming to pass. None of them are taking heed. Now, there's other examples in the scriptures. You know, when men were considered crazy. One is in Second Second Kings, the ninth chapter, with Elishma, or Asalakia, not Elishma, El Elisha, in which um, he anointed Jeh Jehu, all right, to be king. And Jehu said in Second uh, Kings nine and eleven, then Jehu came forth to the servants of his lord, and one said unto him, "Is all well? Are you straight? You good?" Uh, wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye know the man and his communications? So basically, you know, the servant was like, Look, what, why is this crazy ass man, you know, coming unto him? Which he was saying that concerning Elisha. 
Now, when you go into the word med, the word there's Sagai. All right, Sagai. And it says to be mad, to be mad, to be maddened. All right, to show madness. All right, um, to to play uh, uh, to rave through insanity. All right, in which we know that Elisha wasn't mad, but however, that's another example of a prophet being considered mad. It was said concerning the apostle Paul in Acts twenty six and twenty four. Suddenly, Festus shouted, "Paul, you are insane!" All right, this comes from the NLT. Too much study has made you crazy. So they feel the same way about us, all right, that we're insane. So the time is going to come when they're going to use that as a pretext to try to lock us up. You know, the majority of us are already on the list. You know, we know that we got to deal with this kind of shit, you know, but this comes with the ter territory. So bring it on. You know, this doesn't make us anything terrified of our adversaries. But ultimately, what this causes us to do is glorify Yahweh Bashim Yahweh because we knew that this was coming to this. All right, so look, hey, the scripture says this. All right, Philippians 1 and 28, and nothing terrified of your adversaries, which is to, uh, to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of Yahweh. So when they take us and they do the things that they do to us, to them is an evident token of perdition. You know, yeah, we, we're destroying them. You know, we're, we're getting them off the streets. We're, to, we're stopping them from, from, from uh, uh, preaching. You know, we're, we're torturing them. We're beating them. You know, whatever they decide to do, we lock them up in prison. But ultimately to kill, all right, to them it's an evident token of perdition. But however, for unto you it is given... In the behalf of Yahweh Shai, not only to live on him, but also to suffer all right, for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now here to be in me. So guess what? We're set up to suffer just as Yahweh Shai did. So if he was called crazy all right, or mad, then how much more so us being his servants? All right. Don't fear, man. All right, this comes with the territory. The book of Second Thessal uh, uh, the book of Second Timothy one. I got Second Thessalonians on the brain. The book of Second Timothy one and seven. For Yahweh have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his pris prisoner. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of Yahweh. So why are we being afflicted? For the furtherance of the gospel, to further it. But, but the Heavenly Father hasn't given us, given us the spirit of fear. He hasn't uh, made us timid, but he gave us power, you know, love and self-discipline. You know, so we're, we definitely, you know, have the, the strength in this, you know, through Yahweh by Shemiah Shai to consist and to carry on, even despite all of the things that we suffer. So with that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and end the lesson there. You know, uh, um, we are inching closer to the time of Jacob's trouble and get ready, you know, get ready and prepared by gathering this wisdom, knowledge and understanding, because this is going to be the only thing that keeps you sane in that time. All right. And we're the only sane ones in the world. So with that, a